Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Ed the Impala Guy. Um, dropping things on the floor. We're going to continue on with the body work. Uh, and uh, I thought I'd bring you along. What we're going to do tonight is, as you can see, we uh, have cut the piece that fits in the spot here. And um, what I want to accomplish tonight is we're gonna put uh, some backer strips um, long in here and across here for this um, for this patch to back up to. So um, one of the first things we gotta do is we gotta clean up the uh, the back side here and get it down to bare metal. I gotta. See what I'm doing. We got to get this down to bare metal here and here because that's going to attach to the backer strips. And then we're going to cut some backing strips and um, get those down to bare metal. And then we're going to go have to go on the back side here and get that down to bare metal. Um, so there'll be a lot of grinding. Um, I don't think I'm going to record that because all it's going to be is noisy. And uh, I don't think you guys want to hear the noise. So. Um, I'll stop and pause and then we'll go come back and I'll show you how I cleaned it down to bare metal. We're just going to be using um, a whizzy wheel on a, um, a die grinder. And like I said, it's going to be a little bit noisy. Um, Okay, folks, status update here. Um, I've cut um, one of the backer strips. Uh, we had to clear all the paint and primer and, and all the goop off of it. Um, I did the same thing to the back side of the, uh, the area here. So uh, the the uh, panel adhesive or the panel bonding adhesive will have uh, a good surface to bond to. And then uh, basically I made this about an inch and a half wide and I'm kind of splitting the difference with three quarters on each side and we're gonna put a, uh, a sheet metal screw every inch. And those sheet metal screws are just there to hold uh, that in place while the uh, adhesive dries and then we'll back the screws out if they happen to be bonded in place, then I'll just grind the heads off of them. But we're going to uh, finish these last two holes here, and then we're going to repeat the process for, well, camera, for this up here. And then um, we're going to glue those, uh, those two backers in, and then we'll be ready tomorrow to um, actually uh, bond the patch in. And uh, let me show you figure out what I did with the patch. Oh, here it is. As you can see, I've cleaned the back of the patch as well. Um, also along this area here. So we're gonna, you know, be bonding that as well. So it shouldn't uh, go anywhere. It should be a pretty tight fit. And, um, you know, it, it should fit really well. Shouldn't need a whole lot of filler either, uh, which is, is kind of what I'm shooting for here. Because um, generally speaking, if we I zoom back here, um, I don't want to go much above here with the painting. So I want to kind of keep it from about just above this body line and down with the black. Uh, the clear, I can, I'll go as far up as here as far up as, as that lip, we could blend it there. 
and I can, if push comes to shove, I can clear this whole quarter um, if I have to. I'd rather not. I'd rather just uh, blend it and buff it. But I could have a nice buff line, um, you know, right here. As you can see, I don't know if you can see, yeah, I mean, this car's got all kinds of little micro scratches in it, so it's going to need a good buffing anyhow. But uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. I'm going to continue uh, drilling some holes here and getting this patch made up. And uh, I want to, my goal for tonight is to get uh, these two backer plates uh, bonded in with the panel adhesive. I'll show a little bit of that while I'm doing it because um, there's not too much uh, out there on the internet about that. So anyhow, uh, see you in just a little bit. Hey, folks. Well, I think we, uh, I think we did okay. Here, let me take, have you take a look. Here it is, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, just keep in mind, the screws are only temporary. Uh, it's the black goo that's actually doing all the holding. And I think the mistake I made, you might be saying, was, oh, he put too much on. I don't think I put enough on, to be quite honest. I was hoping for a little bit more squeeze out. Um, but I did go in the back here. Let me get a light on the subject here. I did go kind of backfill it um, and kind of seal it a little bit. We did have some squeeze out, so I'm I'm hoping we got some good contact in there. And um, if not, I'll pry it up, grind it off, and do it again. I've got plenty. It, it didn't take a whole lot of uh, of uh, body panel adhesive, so I got plenty left. So we're good um, grinding it off and. And all that will be a pain, but I, I think we're going to be I think we're going to be okay. Um, it's going to take four hours um, before you can pull the screws out. Oh, hold on there, fella. Four hours uh, before we can pull the screws out. You know, basically it's called clamp time, and then it'll fully cure in 24 hours. So, like I said, if it uh, if it's looking like in four hours that the screws are, are hard pulling out or it's going to create gaps or something like that. I probably will just leave the screws in for the full 24 hours. And then, uh, I can always grind them off, uh, grind the heads off, grind the tails off and, and <laughs> really look, act like kind of a fill, you know, filler. Um, so I think it will be all right. But, uh, the, the important part is that, uh, that's no longer a puncture in the skin. Um, the, it has the correct body contours. Um, it's a solid piece of metal. And uh, like I said, we'll feather it out with some filler and then we'll prime and paint and it'll be good to go Morning, on. Morning, everybody. Uh, it's the next day. Um, it hasn't been quite 24 hours yet, but uh, as you can see, the, um, the bonding, uh, panel bonding adhesive is set up. I've uh, managed to get most of the screws out. The ones I couldn't get out, they just have the goop inside of them, so I have to kind of pick it out. But it dried uh, very hard, very strong. And um, we'll go ahead and hit it with some sandpaper. Sand her down flat and start on the body filler work this evening. And uh, we'll, get, uh, we'll get this finished. Anyhow, I just thought I'd update you on um, how that turned out from last night, and it turned out pretty well, I think. Uh, I think our patch fits really well, and um, the adhesive did its job without welding, and um, that's all I could really ask for out of that. So, uh, And I didn't end up using a whole lot of it, so I've got tons left, so I can use it on the other side to patch that, uh, that uh, rust spot. And we'll kind of follow the same procedure over there. So anyhow, I'll update you in a little bit tonight, a little bit later tonight when uh, I get this, uh, the body filler work started. So thanks. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. Um, I've got the first uh, coat of filler on and uh, I block sanded that out a little bit. Um, we're getting ready to put the second coat on. You can see there's some, some imperfections here that are going to need to need the benefit of the second coat and then we'll put some uh, glazing putty on as a final coat get that all sanded out i'm, I'm gonna mix up some filler it's got a very short pot life so once you mix it you gotta apply it um i think i showed this previously or maybe i didn't 
this is the filler I'm using. It's uh, by Evercoat. It's the lightweight, non-clog, um, lightweight filler. Um, it's a gallon. I think it was like $23 a gallon. This stuff is so much better than the Bondo stuff you buy at the store. It is incredible how much better that is. Um, and then uh, for the glazing putty, I'm using this stuff. Uh, it's called USC Auto Body Icing. It comes with a tube of uh, blue hardener as well. It's really soupy. It's it's very runny, uh, almost on the the consistency of a uh, little, actually a little lighter than pudding. Um, probably applesauce, maybe, um, without the chunks. And uh, the Evercoat is um, is a little bit thicker. It uh, it spreads really well. All right, I hope you guys can see okay. I'm going to get this mixed up. I'm using um, these disposable sheet uh, mixing boards. Again, this was like 20 bucks. It comes with 100 uh, tear-off sheets of... Uh, it's a coated paper so that it doesn't soak through. And basically, it gives you a, a clean surface every time you go to mix, which is really important. Um, so basically, what you want to do to mix your filler... going to open up the can. Somewhere I have an actual can opener type thing. I have no idea where it is, so we're going to use this old screwdriver that I don't care about getting dirty. And you can see this stuff is kind of gray. Um, it does move. It's not a, it's not a total solid, um, but it's not a real liquidy liquid either. You want to stir it up if you haven't stirred it up in a while. And you don't want to mix anything more than you're going to use quickly in a single batch. And what I've found for me is that if I take this and I gloop it about like that. This is about the right amount of filler for a single application on the size area that I'm doing. Like I said, you got to move quick. This and once the stuff starts hardening up, um, you, you know you got to go. <laughs> so there's no uh, there's no messing around. So anyhow, that's about the size um, blob that I like to use. I also do two things. I use like this spreader to mix it. And then I'll use this spreader to um, actually spread it. Um, that way your, um, your spreader doesn't get all gooped up from actually mixing. Um, then we're going to take the hardener. And for a blob this big, you're going to run a strip of hardener across the top of it. Probably about an inch, inch and a half long. Just like that. You don't want to overdo it on the hardener for sure because um, it'll harden really quickly and then you have no working time. So you just want to stir this till it's a uniform color. Mix it all up, you know, kind of spatula it around. Oh, and what I didn't think of is that you guys aren't going to be, I'm going to have to turn this camera around like really quickly because once I go, I go. Turn around here. All right, daylight's wasting, folks. Daylight's wasting.
Now you can see it's starting to kind of harden up here, so I gotta kind of poop or get off the pot. All right, that's gonna be about it. Getting a little too hard to manipulate here. All right, that's it. I'm gonna let that dry about a half hour. And uh, we'll come back and we'll block sand it out some more. And uh, we'll probably come in with the, the glazing putty after that, or the icing. And, um, and we'll be done with that. Anyhow, so that's kind of a step-by-step -step on applying body filler. Again, no expert. I'm learning as I'm going, and I, I'm sure any of the professionals out there are looking at that going, um, dude, that sucks. But it may take me a lot of sanding, a lot of reapplying, a lot of sanding, a lot of reapplying, but I think I eventually get it, and as long as it looks good in the end and looks good under the paint and it isn't like four inches thick or even an inch thick, whatever, um, I think we're doing okay. Like I said, that'll sand down quite a bit and you want it to just fill your stuff without being caked on there. So, um, that's kind of the goal. It's, uh, you know, body filler, not body sculpting. So anyhow, um, I'll probably be back, uh, in a little bit after this, um, after this uh, cures up and uh, I'll, I'll take you along for the block sanding of the second coat which is, is really fun because it's all dusty and dirty. So anyhow, hang on. We'll be right back. All right, good morning, folks. It's the next day, and uh, we've been doing some uh, of the final uh, filler work with the uh, glazing um, uh, filler. Uh, this is the real thin stuff that I told you about. You, you apply it thin. Uh, it's basically just to fill the scratches and the pinholes in the, in the regular body filler. Um, you sand actually most of it off. Um, it's kind of messy, but it sands really easy, sands smooth. Uh, you start this one with a 180 grit, and then you work up to 220, and then 400 um, for the final sanding before priming. Um, so there you have it. Um, we're going to get this uh, block sanded down, and uh, hopefully this will be the last coat. <clears throat> I've uh, done about three so far, just because it uh, hardens so quickly. Um, you got to work fast and you can't do real big areas. So you do a little bit, then you move over, do a little bit more, and then, you know, sand it down and find out where you need to put some more. So anyhow, I'm not going to bore you with the sanding process. It's uh, dirty, it's messy, and it's uh, kind of boring. Um, but basically, I'll see if we can give a little <clears throat> bit of it here. You want to go in an X pattern. Um, start going one way. And then go the other way, kind of working in an X. That'll give you uh, a nice smooth um, knockdown of the high spot. And how, boy, it's really hard to do that. Um, and as you can see, there's dust everywhere, so don't plan on staying clean while you're doing this. But anyhow, uh, just a little update for today, and um, we'll. Uh, we'll Get you back on here uh, when we're done blocking this all out. And um, that'll be the end of the video. And uh, happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Hope you're having a great day. I'm um, having my great day just by uh, relaxing in the garage and working on my car. So talk to you soon and um, take care. Okay, last update for this video. Um, we've got the uh, icing all blocked in and sanded out. That's all sanded all the way to 400. Uh, what I'm going to do, and that was all dry sanded because, um, well, I'm doing it in the garage. I didn't want to make a mess in here. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wet sand six with 600 this entire area right here that's basically going to accept paint. Um, that way the uh, the finish on the, the car is, um, 
is scuffed up enough that it will accept paint. You know, and and you, we're not going to do this like it's going to be ever expanding circles, so to speak. Um, I'm going to sand all this, but I will probably primer the areas that need to be primered. And then I will only color the areas that need to be colored. And then I will only clear the areas that need to be clear, which is, you know, it's the wider circle each time. Uh, one thing I did want to tell you about this uh, sanding is that uh, one of the things that I learned in woodworking is that you use your coarsest grit to remove the material you want to remove. So with this, it's it's the 80 grit sandpaper for the Bondo and then the 120 grit or 180 grit sandpaper for the icing. And you use that to actually block it down and get everything even and level. The subsequent grits, the finer grits, are only meant to get the scratches out of the previous grit from the previous grit. So we, we use the you know 180 grit to get the 80 grit scratches out. We use the 220 grit to get the 180 grit scratches out. We use the 320 grit to get the 220 grit scratches out. We use the 400 grit to get the 320 grit scratches out. And we'll use the 600 grit to get the 400 grit scratches out. Um, and that's kind of how that goes. But you can see what was previously a, um, a creased in area with a big uh, jagged puncture mark is now back together. Looking straight, looking smooth. Um, that should paint up really nice. And um, like I said, the only thing I'm worried about is is the clear coat and uh, blending that. Um, other than that, we're going to call this side uh, done as far as the bodywork goes. The rest is going to be paint. And uh, we're going to launch in on the other side. And that's going to end this video. Uh, thanks for uh, hanging in there throughout all the updates. This took a couple days to go through. But uh, that's one thing with the bodywork and sanding. It... it it takes a while to do. Um, there's a lot of just boring steps of sanding, 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 and getting dust everywhere and getting dust all over yourself and, and your garage. Um, I should probably be doing all this block sanding outside, but the wife's car is here and it's parked in front of the garage, so I'd have to move several cars. It's raining out, yada, yada, yada. Um, it's nice and comfortable in here in the garage. But uh, the one thing we will do is we will thoroughly clean the garage before we start painting in here. Um, you, you never really want to do your block sanding and, and your body work in the area you do your paint. Um, I may even just go ahead when I paint this, set up a shelter outside, uh, depending on the weather. Because actually it would probably be cleaner outside in a shelter than it would be um, in the garage here. Because the garage is dusty, and even without the body work, the garage is dusty. So anyhow, um, whoa, where am I going? Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, please, so that uh, other people can see this video. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And if you are subscribed, hit the notification bell. That way, anytime I put out a new video, you get notified of it. I appreciate all the support. I appreciate the comments. Um, and like I said, uh, we're just going to keep trucking along on this. It's getting...